Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I just want to note that today's presentation on mortgages and homeowner first aid is being recorded, and the recording will be available later on our website. I'll try to leave some time for questions at the end, and I'm happy to provide slides to our registrants. Um, and I want to say thank you for joining us for this presentation. I'm Taylor Amstutz, one of our homeowner protection attorneys. Before we get going, I just want to say a quick note about who we are. For 50 years, Betsetic's attorneys and advocates have worked to provide a variety of free legal services in LA County. Our homeowner protection team, specifically, works tirelessly to help elderly and low-income Los Angeles County residents. We focus on preventing homelessness and preserving what is often a family's greatest asset and tool for building intergenerational wealth, which is their home. So now you know the who, now let's talk about the what. Today's presentation is geared toward residential properties and includes general information. So none of the information provided here today should be taken as legal advice about your specific circumstances. To give legal advice, lawyers need to access all of the facts and today's presentation is about you helping yourself to identify a problem and whether or not you should speak to an attorney. If you would like to speak to an attorney, please feel free to sign up for our monthly clinic where you'll also have the opportunity to meet with a housing counselor or feel free to contact our team directly. The information for both of these resources is available at the end of this presentation. We called this presentation First Aid because similar to the Red Cross course, we're just covering the basics today. I can't remember if they cover this in first aid classes, but you probably know it already. Prevention is always better than a cure. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stigma around asking for help, especially when it comes to our home. I'm here to tell you the tragedy of losing your house is far more painful than reaching out, asking a few questions, and getting help. My hope for you today is that you'll leave here with knowledge and resources that empower you to ask for help early on. So today we're covering all the topics you see here, but if there's anything you'd like more information about, please feel free to put it in the chat and we would love to consider that for a future presentation topic. We're gonna start off with some basic terminology, discuss mortgage stress and foreclosure, tips for avoiding foreclosure, uh, the do's and don'ts of foreclosure-related scams, reducing property-related costs, and some helpful community resources and agencies. And before we continue, I just want to remind all of our participants to please mute themselves until the end when we have time for questions. So let's start off with some basic terminology. A mortgage is a loan secured against a property. It's secured by a deed of trust against the title of the home, which gives the bank the right to foreclose if the loan isn't paid, which just means they can sell the home to pay off the debt. As you probably know, there are many different kinds of mortgages, but uh, most common is when a home is purchased and the buyer borrows the money to buy the home. Uh, there are also reverse mortgages and HELOCs, which we're not gonna get into today, um, and there's a priority of mortgages. So there's a first or second. Sometimes people have multiple mortgages. Uh, but before we move on from this slide, I just want to note, as you'll see later, foreclosure is a long process and homeowners have many rights along the way. And the bank is actually supposed to help you keep your home whenever possible. Some more fun terminology. Um, a mortgage servicer, the bank or company that manages your mortgage, they send you statements, they collect payments, and the servicer can actually be different from the lender or the bank that owns your loan um, or who you got it from at the beginning of um, when the transaction was executed. Home equity is just the value of your home minus the debts that you owe against the home. If something is delinquent in this context, we're talking about being behind or late on your mortgage payments. Foreclosure is the formal name for the process that the bank has to go through to force the sale of a property when the homeowner falls, fails to pay their mortgage. 
uh, loss mitigation, as you'll see here, the steps that a bank or servicer must follow to work with the homeowner to avoid foreclosure. Forbearance is an agreement with your mortgage servicer or lender to lower or delay mortgage payments, usually taking the debt and putting it at the end of the life of the loan. So it's not forgiveness, unfortunately. Um, there is a distinction there. Reinstatement of a loan is just when a borrower goes from being in default on a loan to being in good standing. So maybe they had previously fallen behind and now they are no longer. So their loan is reinstated. Rescission um, or notice of default is when the bank withdraws a foreclosure notice and stops the foreclosure process. And a reconveyance of the deed of trust is when the loan is paid off entirely and the bank releases its hold on the property. So in our next few slides, you'll see some helpful graphics on the foreclosure timeline, but the main takeaway is that foreclosure does not happen immediately. Um, if you're behind on payments, you need to be that way for at least 120 days, and that's considered the pre-foreclosure phase. And then there's a minimum of 90 days between the notice of default and the notice of sale. And then there's a minimum of 85 days between the notice of sale and the actual sale itself. So you have approximately nine months from the first missed mortgage payment to the foreclosure sale to save your home and its equity. Uh, foreclosure does not require a court process in California where a non-judicial foreclosure state default and sale notices are recorded publicly on property title. Uh, and we do have some resources later uh, that would allow you to check the status of your property. Foreclosure can happen for a variety of reasons. Today, we're just talking about failure to pay your mortgage, but um, there are also foreclosures due to delinquent property taxes, homeowner association fees, and other debts. So here we have our graphic on the pre-foreclosure timeline. As you can see, this process alone takes at least 120 days, but it can be longer. And then here we have the formal foreclosure process. There are many, many opportunities for intervention along the road to the foreclosure sale. But just like, like neglecting an illness, if you don't seek treatment early on, something that once could have been treated by a very simple Band-Aid becomes much more dire. So what happens at a foreclosure sale? The home is sold by auction at the time and place that's stated on the notice. Delays in the sale are possible and not uncommon. So please ask, ask your lender, ask the trustee, uh, it is, they want to work with you in a lot of cases, and uh, you won't know until you ask. Uh, the last day to save the house is typically five days before the sale date listed, and the best practice is to always notify or postpone the sale with the trustee, not the lender specifically. So the trustee's information should be on the notice as well. Uh, possible outcomes of a foreclosure sale. Um, a lot of times they are postponed, um, but sometimes the home is sold to the bank, uh, sometimes it's sold to a third party, or the sale is canceled. Oh, we've gotten ahead of ourselves here. Here we go. Um, homeowners have no right to the property being sold at market value, so the home may be sold for the amount of the debt owed and the equity can be lost. Mortgage stress and your rights. So it's important to understand your mortgage, which includes the type of the loan, the interest rate, the escrow account. Um, we'll go over that, I believe, in a later slide. Um, but just look over your paperwork. You can speak to a housing counselor. Um, you know, yeah. at, at, feel free to ask questions. You know, what kind of loan is it that you have? How much is your interest rate? Is it fixed? Is it variable? Do you have an escrow account? Is there a balloon provision upon default? Your bank isn't always right, so know how to ask the right questions. And classic attorney line, get it in writing. Don't waste your time on the phone if it's not going anywhere. If you uh, believe that you're incorrectly delinquent on your mortgage or that there's been a mistake, you can send a request for information and a notice of error. 
Notices of error can require a lender to delay the foreclosure in order to investigate them. And templates for both of these documents are available on the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau website, which is linked later in our resource slide. So as I mentioned before, there are many options to avoid foreclosure on the very long road to the sale. Uh, there are loss mitigation options, which include forbearance, which is just pausing or lowering payments temporarily, asking when to pay it back. Um, there's repayment where you can pay what you owe at the end of the loan or there's a loan modification, <clears throat> which just means changing the terms of the loan permanently. It does require a completed application. This is something that our housing counselors who we work with as part of our clinic are able to assist with. Uh, reverse mortgages are a bit different, but you can still request a payment plan and an at-risk extension. Also, you can refinance your loan, and you can sell the home or do a short sale, which just means negotiating with your lender to sell the home for less than the debt owed, which avoids foreclosure. Regardless of your situation, read the documents that your lender sends you. They should include your loss mitigation options as well as who to contact. We also have um, some helpful questions listed here to ask your servicer. Uh, foreclosure prevention options depend on the type of loan, the financial situation, uh, the amount of equity in your home, and the current interest rates and real estate market. So uh, when you're speaking with your servicer, you can ask what options are available to help temporarily reduce or suspend my payments. Are there forbearance, loan modification, or other options applicable to my situation? Can you waive fees on my mortgage account? Uh, these are just a few suggestions to guide you in your conversation. So you may be asking yourself, why would the bank go out of its way to offer me options? They're actually required to by law, um, but that doesn't mean that that's always what happens. So it's helpful to get a second opinion and to know your rights. So we spoke earlier about escrow or impound accounts. Um, these are commonly required for mortgages since the Dodd-Frank Frank Act. Um, and basically the borrower pays taxes, insurance, and other house costs in advance. And then the lender pays them from this account, which is helpful in budgeting for larger bills. Every year, the lender is required to do an analysis of how much you will owe for the next year. And the monthly payments can change with property taxes or insurance changes. If the insurance premium goes down, the homeowner can request a short year analysis to reduce the monthly escrow payment sooner. Um, and they are required to refund any amounts that are not spent within a short period of time. I'll reiterate again, uh, there are so many resources out there that are available, especially if you reach out early for help. Um, there are free HUD certified housing counselors um, you can complain to government agencies if you believe um, that there has been wrongful conduct, um, and you can speak to an attorney, obviously. Um, housing counselors are fantastic because they can help you talk to your lender, negotiate your options, and identify programs that you may be eligible for. As I mentioned before, there is information at the end of this presentation um, for all of these resources that we discuss throughout. All right, we're gonna go through just a few bewares. The first is beware of foreclosure scams. Scammers search public records and prey on homeowners in distress. So beware, demands for upfront payments or payment by cashier check or wire, signing over the deed of your home, definitely not a great idea, request to sign false information or declarations, even if it seems harmless, uh, oftentimes scammers are trying to pressure you to act quickly because they know if you have time to think through this, you may come to the realization that they are in fact a scammer. Um, and if they're guaranteeing results, 
that's that can be another red flag. Something I love to say in life and in our scam awareness presentations is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Beware of offers of bankruptcy, which can also be a scam. A lot of times people think that um, bankruptcy may you know, save their home, it may be kind of an easy out, but unfortunately bankruptcy is really a last resort in foreclosure and it usually won't save the home or be a sustainable long-term solution. It seems attractive because the, the people think the debt would be forgiven, but in reality, there really is no way to get out of paying your mortgage. Uh, the negative bankruptcy information remains on your credit report for up to 10 years after the filing date, depending on the type of bankruptcy that you declare. Uh, the negative bankruptcy information will also appear in your credit report and make it difficult for you to obtain alternate housing options, loans, and any other service that may require a credit check. It generally increases your housing payments rather than decreases it. And the debtors who opt to have a repayment plan make installments to creditors who do so, who do so over a period of three to five years. So some do's and don'ts. Keep all documents received from your servicer, including statements and notices. Do document the financial hardship you're facing. Keep receipts. Do get a second opinion before signing a deed or paying upfront for mortgage help or bankruptcy. Please check the license of the person that's helping you for real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and attorneys. All this information is available online. Please seek help early. Don't wait until you can't pay your mortgage. As we discussed, HUD certified housing counselors offer free services to homeowners to plan for changes in their financial situation and or avoid foreclosure. We finished with the do's, moving on to the don'ts. Don't ignore the problem or letters from your mortgage servicer. Sometimes the mail can be a little overwhelming Maybe it looks scary if it's coming from your mortgage servicer, but it is so much better, again, to address the issue early on. Open the mail that you receive from your servicer. Avoid the long-term finance reality. There are no magic fixes, but delay is possible. Um, don't be pushed into signing something that you're uncomfortable with. And don't think that you're all alone. Help is available. Um, again, if you can just mute yourselves till the end, I'd be happy to, to answer any questions then. So we have another informal estate planning beware. Uh, don't sign your title over to others, including family members for the purposes of getting a loan or avoiding probate. Transfers of property title can limit your rights and allow others to take out loans on your property. Transfers of property title can cause taxes to increase to match the current property value, although there are some exclusions such as the parent to child transfer, but those need to be filled out properly and filed. There are other estate planning tools available to protect the rights that people are often trying to protect when they do these informal estate planning transfers. So uh, we have a very exciting Leaving a Legacy um, program at Betsetic, uh, and I believe that information is also included in this presentation. And then there's also a free LA County alert system for title changes. So you can sign up using the link here to receive notifications of any changes to title to your home. Another beware, predatory home improvement loans. Uh, what has been trendy and is continuing to be trendy is solar panels, um, property assessed clean energy loans, and door-to-door -door sales. Uh, we don't have time to get into all of that today, but um, whether solar panels will be a good investment or reduce your energy bills depends on whether they are tailored to your home and energy usage and whether they are properly installed. I'm not saying that uh, solar panels are a bad idea necessarily, but it is certainly a great idea to know what you're signing up for. Many government programs 
covering the cost are tax rebates. So they're not upfront payments. And then on whether and how much tax you pay. Um, often there are hidden costs or penalties. So beware of signing anything on a tablet. Pace liens can actually violate the terms of your existing mortgage. So beware of any loans that are against the home. Beware of loans with vague, imprecise terms, verbal only terms, or offers of free services. Again, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Consumers have a three-day right to cancel many home solicit solicitation contracts um, from the time they receive the rent. And that's actually a five-day right to cancel for those 65 and older. Just very briefly on the topic of reducing costs, on this slide, we have several resources for reducing phone, internet, utilities, and other costs. So if your home is in need of repairs, there are actually grants and public loans available and links in this slide. This was a lot of information in the last few slides. So some main points to take away, uh, foreclosure takes many months and the bank slash servicer must offer the homeowner options to avoid foreclosure. But they are not required to go out of their way to help. So it's important to investigate and get advice about the best option for you. There's no right to sell at the market rate for a home in foreclosure, so equity can be lost. It's important to keep all written documents from your bank slash servicer and don't believe it unless it's in writing. Get it in writing. Don't think you're alone. There are so many options available as we've discussed, um, especially if you get help early, homeowner rights and options decrease over time. So again, reach out. There is no shame in getting help um, to preserve your home. Here is that fateful slide I've been talking about this whole entire time. There are many resources available here with links. Um, we have the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau right over here, second from the top, um, where they do offer the uh, qualified written requests, so the uh, notice of error and the others that we were discussing. They have templates available. Um, using the links here, you can check your property records also, learn more about your rights as a consumer, file complaints, and more. So if you have um, any questions about home ownership or otherwise, bedsetic practices in many areas of law, not just home ownership. Um, so if you're looking for assistance from one of our teams or would like referrals to other resources, um, you can contact our general intake line, um, which we have on our website and coming up. Um, and if you believe that you have been the victim of a scam or elder abuse, uh, if you're at risk of foreclosure, uh, please feel free to contact our homeowner protection team directly. Here we have the information about the clinic that we discussed earlier and um, some other helpful resources. This is our general intake information. And then um, here's my personal information and our homeowner protection information can be found uh, on the website. So thank you very much for joining us today. I think that that, here we go. Um, all of this in one lovely, neat summary slide. Uh, we do have an online platform as well that I wanna mention uh, where you can apply for, for services there as well, in addition to our intake line that is listed. So thank you again for your time and attention today. And I'm going to stop our recording to allow time for questions.